Well, we're already a few weeks into CBB rank as we count down the top 100 teams in college basketball. I hope you're all enjoying it. And today we're joined by head coach Russell Turner. His UC Irvine Anteaters are 85th in our poll. He's guided them to the big dance twice before and looks to make it a third time this season. Coach Turner, how are you? I'm doing well, Matt. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for the recognition you guys have given us. So of course, and part of that recognition, of course, is due to the experience you bring back. Now, I know last season you were one of the youngest teams in the country by far, but you guys have seven players in the rotation that will be back this season. What's it like <laughs> having them back? Well, it's a different feeling going into this season for sure than it was last year. You know, last year I knew we had a talented group, but also knew we were, you know, exceptionally inexperienced. Um, with everybody on our team last year being in a really new role, I don't think that's near the case this year. I think that that all the guys that we've got um, are coming into the season with high expectations and, you know, with, with a set of things to draw on that should allow them to have improved years. And that doesn't always happen. You know, we're going to have to make that happen. We're going to have to do that as a team. Uh, but I am feeling like this team has a chance to be a good team. And obviously last year with everything happening during COVID, you know, the season definitely didn't go perhaps like a normal season would have gone. So what's it kind of mean based off of that as well, getting a second go around with these guys, especially when across the country it's been transfer after transfer and you get seven key guys back. Yeah, well, uh, I am I am really pleased with our continuity. Uh, we've had that throughout the time I've been here, and, and I think that uh, speaks to what a great university environment this is. Um, I think we have a good basketball program too, but I think we have a great university environment here. And you mentioned COVID last year, along with our youth. I think that uh, I've got to give the, the guys on our team a lot of credit, and our staff too. I've got great assistant coaches because we didn't know how a young team would respond. And there were a lot of young teams in college basketball with brand names that weren't able to handle all that came at them last year. My team did that well, and uh, it wasn't easy for us. It wasn't easy for anybody. And uh, we got beat up a little bit in our non-conference schedule, but we, uh, we did improve. And uh, we had a lot of toughness, a lot of resilience, uh, like everybody had to have. But uh, we did that along with competing at a good level. So I'm eager to see if we can become even more competitive. You mentioned those improvements, eight wins in your last 10 games. How do you maybe build off of that heading into this season? Yeah, well, I did think we were playing well at the end. You know, I think uh, maybe our best game of the year was in the, the semifinals of our conference tournament. We played a UC Riverside team that was really good, and we handled them from tip to buzzer, um, which, you know, was a surprise to me, really, that we were able to be as good as we were in that game. And we were not nearly as good the next night against Santa Barbara when they beat us. And Santa Barbara was an excellent team. I mean, they – they were outstanding and they deserved to win the tournament and nearly um, were able to pull off a first round win in the NCAA. So there's no shame at all in the fact that we weren't able to beat them, but I don't think we played as well in that championship game as we could have played, um, even though a lot of the credit for that goes to Santa Barbara. I hope that we can use that as fuel. You know, I hope we can uh, learn some lessons from that. I do think this team improved. They took well to um, – the things that are most important to us as a program as the year went on, they showed a lot of improvement. So if we could continue to build on that, um, then I like, I like what we could have. And we're going to have a really difficult schedule this year. So when you're uh, checking these rankings around Christmas, I don't know how much we're going to look like a top 100 team when you look at the numbers next to our team's name. But I do think we're going to be good uh, when we round into February and March. Well, we've made it lit this long without mentioning him, but Colin Welp is the star of your team, and he will be again this next season. You know, just how, why is he so important to you guys? I mean, you, you look at the stats, but what does he do maybe off the court as well during practice that we don't see that makes him well, such a key veteran? You know, um, it's a cliche in coaching that when your your best players are also your best people and your you know most committed guys, it, it, that's a great place to – begin thinking you can have a good team. You know, Colin um, is ready to lead with this team this year, and he's the hardest working guy in the program. And so he's a tone setter. 
and and that's critical when you know your your top guy or the guy who's earned maybe the most accolades continues to be the hardest worker and i think we've got some young kids who um who are coming along with that you know it's not like we're a one-man team at all we're an exceptionally balanced team uh, that colin leads in knowing that uh when the game's on the table on the offensive end he's likely to be in a decision-making position whether he finishes plays or makes the right play to another guy everybody on our in our group trusts him and um i also want to say what an improved defender he is you know he's always been an excellent rebounder but um he's become a plus defender in our program which has been a nice thing to watch develop and i think he's going to be even more of that this season and he's improved in all three years, year to year in multiple of the main statistics. But I guess what's he been working on specifically this offseason? Well, Colin works as hard on his game as any guy I've had. You know, and I think that he learned a lot and, and he's learned every year as the best teams that we play. we got really outstanding coaches in our league and they all do different things to try to play against him. He's going to see different things on different nights, depending on, um, what the other team's strategy and what the other team's personnel is going to be. So I think he's uh, gotten better and better at adapting his game to the things that he's seen already um, and the things that he's likely to see, especially in crunch time moments, because uh, he shines in those moments. Colin is not afraid uh, to step forward and take the risks that that, that come with being a guy who uh, has the game in his hands, so to speak, down the stretch. And, and I love that about him. Staying in the front court, I know Colin's not the only big front court guy you have, but Brad Green is gone. You know, how prepared is Emmanuel, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Tishamanga? It's Shimanga. Shimanga. Um, yeah, I think, well, it won't just be Emmanuel. You know, we've got a bunch of guys on our roster, I think, that are all going to benefit from the minutes that uh, Brad's departure leaves. And we're going to miss Brad. Brad was Defensive Player of the Year in our league last year, but we do have talent and depth at that position. Um, I'll start with Austin Johnson, who played, you know, alongside Emmanuel last year a lot, but I think this year is going to play a lot alongside Colin Welp, and I expect him to have a breakthrough year in his third season. So I guess he's a third-year sophomore or whatever. Um, but Emmanuel Shimanga, I want to credit also because um, he needed to get in better shape and nobody's done more of that this offseason for us than he has. He's really changed his body. He looks different. Um, he's healthier now. He had a, a broken foot injury in his first year with us, and so he was you know, a consistent contributor last year. I think that's going to be even more the case this coming year. And then we have some other big guys who are going to get a chance um, to, to join in. And you know, we always have depth there, um, but we also always have guys who are highly competitive and who push each other. And then we look into the backcourt and, you know, Isaiah Lee was really the starting guard for you guys last year. DJ Davis also shared that role. Is it kind of like an open competition maybe, or, or, or are you just looking at everything, not trying to make a decision just yet between those two? Yeah. The, I mean, the, we don't have a decision made on any um, specific roles, but we can't deny that, you know, Isaiah for us last year was a, a starter the whole season on a, team that was, you know, in the hunt for a championship and almost there. Um, we know that, that he's going to be excellent for us. DJ Davis um, is the size of a point guard, but he really is more of a scorer in a lot of ways. I think he's getting better. Uh, we know how talented he is. I mean, he showed glimpses last year of being a, an all-conference type player in this league. And then Dawson Baker was the freshman of the year last year. And um, whether you look at him as a, you know, as a as a guard or, or, you know, what you look at him as doesn't really matter. I mean, he's an excellent decision maker and, and he can, he can fit well with anybody else. I also think we have some guys who will emerge this year. I think Justin Holmes going to have a great year. I think uh, Andre Henry's going to have a great year and there's others. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to play a lot of guys knowing that, you know, we need to win three games in three days uh, to, to earn our conference's top prize. And so we're going to give everybody a chance and see, see how it shakes out. And, you know, something else that sticks out to me about that is you guys have 9, 10 deep there, and they're all over six foot. And the majority of your guys are really six two or taller. I mean, it's a real big team. <laughs> How does that probably play into stuff on maybe the offensive and the defensive side of things? Yeah, you know, um, 
it's interesting you say that because I don't I don't necessarily think of us as all that big because ex- because of the size we've had in some of our previous teams. But I know we got a bunch of big guys. I mean, we're going to have a crowded team bus and we're going to pack some Southwest flights when when we travel. Um, but we do, I guess, have size and length at a lot of positions. You know, I didn't even mention J.C. Butler yet, but I think J.C. Butler is is a guy who's uh, poised to emerge. You know, and um, he's both tall and long for us. You know, we will be a good rebounding team. We're going to be a good defensive team. We're going to be a good rebounding team. Those have been staples for us. And I think um, everybody in our league knows that with the combination of how hard we play and and the depth and size we have, we're going to be a a tough team to play against. We're going to make, you know, we're going to make you uncomfortable with the way that we guard and the way we rebound. I think that's going to be a consistency that maintains in our program. Well, Coach, finally, we're projecting a tournament appearance for you guys, but how will you get there all the way ahead in March? Well, we hey, thanks for the projection. Um, you know, I, I appreciate it, but I also know that it doesn't mean a whole lot, uh, that we got to go do it. And, you know, I think that the challenge for this team is to come together as a group and to become more competitive. You know, we, we, we lost a couple of key – games in our conference last year where I felt like we either ran out of gas or we didn't quite have enough to finish um, on the road a couple times. And then, you know, in the championship game, in the second half, we just got dominated. So um, I think that if we can improve our overall competitive level and conditioning and, uh, and depth and talent, then we'll have a chance. And, and we're looking forward to that opportunity.